So today's topic is 1.3 geometric sequences found on pages 32 to 45 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of arithmetic and geometric, both finite and infinite sequences and series. And our lesson objectives, number one, you need to be able to identify a geometric sequence and compare it to what we already know about arithmetic sequences. Number two, you need to be able to de develop a general formula for geometric sequences. And number three, you need to be able to use the geometric sequence formula to answer various types of questions regarding geometric sequences. So recall that a sequence is a list of numbers separated by commas. And we know that an arithmetic sequence is when each term is found by adding the same number. It could be positive or negative, and it could be a whole number or a fraction to the previous term. Now a geometric sequence then is when each term is found by multiplying the same number. So instead of adding is just by multiplying the same number. That number again can be positive or negative and it could be a whole number or a fraction to the previous term. So example, identify if the following sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. If it's a geometric sequence, we're gonna identify what we call the common ratio. And that common ratio is the number that we are multiplying by each term. So the first one, two, four, six, eight. Well, in this case, we're only going up by two by adding each time, so this is arithmetic. It's not geometric. Second one, 2, 6, 18, 54. Well, you can see that we're multiplying by three each time, so this is geometric. And that means that our ratio, our common ratio, or R, is actually three. Now, the way that you can find that is just by taking any term and dividing it by the previous term. So 54 divided by 18 will give you 3. 18 divided by 6 will give you 3. 6 divided by 2 will give you 3. And finally, 3, 2, 4 thirds, 8 ninths, 16, 20 sevenths. Um, this one might be a little bit harder to tell right off the bat, but it is geometric. And so we will take any of these terms, so like 16 over 27, and we're going to divide it by... The previous term. That would be 8 ninths. Now remember that when you're dividing with fractions you actually end up multiplying. And then I always suggest to simplify before you do anything, before you multiply these together. So 16 and 8 simplify. 8 goes into 8 once, it goes into 16 twice. And 9 and 27, 9 goes into 9 once and into 27 three times. So that means we're saying that our common ratio is 2 thirds. We'll do the same thing with 8 ninths and 4 thirds. If we get 2 thirds again, then we can uh, assume that that is our common ratio. Now the other thing we could also do is just take 3, multiply it by 2 thirds, and we should get an answer of 2, and you can see that that's the case. We can take 2 and multiply it by 2 thirds, that gives us 4 thirds, that's our third term here. And if we take that and multiply it by 2 thirds, we get 8 ninths, which is our fourth term. So that means our common ratio in this case is two thirds. So we're going to develop a TN formula for geometric sequences because we had a TN formula or an nth term formula for arithmetic sequences. But in, and we're going to be using the same variables as we have for the other formulas. But instead of using D, which we use for a common difference, we're going to use R, which we just learned represents the uh, common ratio. So to do this, we're going to look at the following geometric sequence. 2, 6, 18, 54, 162. So if you look at it this way, 2, two is our first term, T1. In order to get our next term, I multiply by our common ratio. And so that T1 times R is our second term. Our third term would be that result multiplied by R again. So T1 times R times R. Our 54 there would be our first number multiplied by R once, multiplied by R twice, and multiplied by R a third time. So if we take a look at this, let me just write in the T1, that's your first term. So if we look at this, our first term, our second term, our third term, and our fourth term. Um, if we're gonna develop a formula, it looks like in our second term, we multiply by one R, in our third term, we multiply by two r's. In our fourth term, we multiply by three r's. So really, we can say that our nth term is going to be our first term multiplied by r. And the amount of times we multiply by r always seems to be one less than which term it is. So that would be n minus one. So fourth term, there's three r's. So that means we would have 
r to the four minus one power of r to the third power. And so this is our general formula for geometric sequences. So here's our first example. It says, suppose there are three bacteria present before they each split into two separate bacteria. What's the general form for this relationship? And how many bacteria are present after it separates 10 times? So we're starting off with three. And as in every one of these examples that we do, you should always try and write out your sequence. And then each of these bacteria split, so that now becomes six. Each of those split, that becomes 12. Each of those split, that becomes 24, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if we're gonna write the general form, that means we need to know um, a few things. And that is, oops, we need to know what T1 is, we need to know what R is, and we don't know what N is, and that's fine, because that's part of the general form. So Tn is equal to our first term, which is three, and our ratio, which is two, and that's raised to the power of N minus one. Now you have to be careful, because some of you might want to multiply three times two together, you cannot do that because two has an exponent associated with it. So you can't say that this is six to the power of n minus one. That is not equal. You cannot say that. Don't ever do that. You have to leave them separate. So second part of the question says, how many bacteria are present after it separates 10 times? Well, that just means we're looking for the 10th term. So T10 equals three times two to the power of 10 minus one, which is three times two to the power of nine and two to the power of nine is 512, and three times 512 is then 1536. So after 10 um, splits or separations, there's gonna be 1536 bacteria where there had only been three to begin with. So here's our second example. It says, suppose you're using a photocopier to reduce the size of a picture to 60% of its original size. How big would the picture be if its original length was 42 centimeters and you reduced it five times? So we have our TN formula for geometric sequences. And that is TN equals T1 times R to the power of N minus one. We're talking about the fifth reduction. So it'll be the fifth term. It started off as 42 centimeters. And every time you take 60% of it, that's like multiplying by 0 0.6. And we're doing that five minus one times. So that's 42 times 0 0.6 to the power of four. Well, 0 0.6 to the power of four is 0 0.1296. You multiply that by 42 and you get a final length of 5.44 centimeters. Here's another example. It says in a geometric sequence, the second term is 28 and the fifth term is 1792. Find the first term, the common ratio and state the first three terms of the sequence. So we've done questions like this before. Um, we need to make two equations because we have two sets of information. We know that the second term is 28, so we can make one equation with that information, and that the fifth term is 1792. We can make another equation with that information. So our second term happens to be 28, and that is A, which we don't know yet, and we don't know R, but we do know that it's the second term. So that leaves us with 28 equals A times just R. Our other equation would be with our fifth term. We know that is 1792. And that would equal A again times R, which we don't know either one of those, but we know it's the fifth term, so that would be five minus one. So we're left with 1792 equals A times R to the fourth power. Now again, we have two equations with two variables in each. We need to probably use substitution in this case, not even probably, we have to use substitution in this case in order to solve for A and R. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for A in the first equation. And by doing that, I'm just gonna divide both sides by R. So now I get 28 over R. So if I take that and I substitute it over into this equation, I now get 1792 equals, instead of A, I know it's 28 over R. And I still have R to the fourth. Now by using exponent rules, I can combine R to the fourth and this R in the bottom of this fraction. And that just gives me an r to the third power. I can also get rid of this 28 by dividing both sides by 28. So I get 1792 divided by 28. That happens to be 64, and that's r cubed. If I now take the cube root of both sides, because I have an r cubed and I just want a regular r, I end up getting r equaling 4. So if my second term was 28, then my first term 
was four times less, so that would be like dividing it by four, so I get a seven. And then if I take 28 and multiply it by four, I'll get my third term, and that is 112. So there's our first term, which is seven, common ratio, which is four, and our first three terms are seven, 28, and then 112. So in summary, a geometric sequence is when each term is found by multiplying the previous term by the same number, and that's called the common ratio, the number that you're multiplying by. Remember with arithmetic sequences, we found it by adding the same number to the previous term, and this time it's by multiplying. This common ratio can be a whole number, it could be a fraction, or it could be a decimal. And to find the common ratio, you simply take each term and divide it by the previous term. The formula for a geometric sequence is Tn equals T1 times R raised to the power of n minus 1. Remember that T1 is your first term, R is that common ratio, and n is your number of terms. And there are many real-life situations that are geometric sequences. Writing out the first few terms in your sequence can be a huge help. And so your assignment is on pages 39 to 45. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.